Support for Faith on Trial and Iowa Catholic Radio provided in part by Imogene Ingredients. Our freedom of conscience and religion is being challenged by laws and regulations imposed by secular society. It's time to hear from the top Christian litigators in the nation who have come forward to tell us the truth and help us defend our faith. Hear ye, hear ye. All rise. Faith on Trial with Defender of the Faith, Deacon Mike Menno is in session. And good Thursday morning from the Iowa Catholic Radio Studios in West Des Moines. I'm Deacon Mike Menno. We want to send out a belated welcome to the folks listening in Creston at 90.9. Nine and FM. We have a new we have a call. New, right? What do they call that? Call letters or new Something station like that. tower? They they have frequency, frequency. there. <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy. <laughs> They've been with us. I'm for not a an couple. attorney, and I am not a radio aficionado. I just talk <laughs> yeah well they've they've been with us here for a couple of weeks and we haven't uh, greeted them so consider yourselves greeted and welcome it's nice yes. to have you. and yeah. text us if you're if you're listening and you want a question answered or uh, you want to just say hello give us a text uh, that's right what's that number or if you, or if you want to be on the radio <laughs> yeah. Give us well, a call. yeah we could call We're always looking for guests <laughs> exactly gina how are you this morning i'm doing well yes i uh i Notice that we're moving into fall. The weather feels very fallish today. Mm-hmm. A little cooler. It does. A little cooler. We want to send some up. prayers to um, all of those who have been affected. Speaking of weather, um, all of those who have been affected by the Hurricane Ida from mm-hmm. you know the folks in Louisiana or Mississippi and. Um, and those now, now in the northeast that are really getting hammered. For I a saw some time. pictures this morning on the uh, television of the. Uh, subways in new york how the water was just pouring down into those things yes and, uh, yeah I, I know there's been some loss of life and has been. i know the, those families have been uprooted and um i god bless them all and we pray for them today we certainly do We've got an interesting show today we're going to well, be talking with julie blake senior counsel for adf i i wondered you know more and more we we have is this a legal show or is this a medical show? It seems like we yeah. handle a lot of uh, stories that d- relate to m- medicine. Well, the uh, uh, HHS has issued a new directive that requires doctors to uh, offer and to perform transgender or gender transition, I guess, surgeries to their patients, regardless of whether they think it's appropriate, medically appropriate, or they have conscience objections to that. That's right. And uh, so with all the mandates that are going on, you got to take this vaccine, you got to do this, you got to do that. Uh, we're going to tie up the courts on a lot of this stuff. Right. And I saw this week that uh, the courts are getting involved in a lot of different health cases. Um, uh, a person wanted some kind of medication and for the treatment of the COVID and the doctor said no way. And they had to go all the way through the court system. Just to be able to um, get a therapeutic, to get a therapeutic, yeah. yes. Uh, it's um, I don't know why the courts are so involved in medicine and why our government is so involved in our personal health care. That's why the government is trying <laughs> to get involved in our personal health care, and the courts are there to protect you from that. Yeah. So if that says anything, then I don't think we need. Um, what is it? Um, uh, how, what's the worries about the the government health care system like they have in Canada? We're kind of experiencing oh, yeah. some of that without the actual um, in implementation of it. Well, it's kind of interesting in this case, and we'll let Julie explain it more because uh, she was uh, one of the authors of the 81-page filing that was filed in Tennessee the other day. I guess two weeks ago it was. Um, and um, uh, what they're doing is they are taking Obamacare where Obamacare prohibits discrimination on the basis of sex. And they're saying now that sex, they're redefining that to include gender identity. And that's what they're doing. And I think they're going to get caught on it. But The judge will have to sort it out, I guess. Well, we'll see what Julie's argument is. That is. We'll, look forward we'll, to and that. And we will have her here in just a couple of minutes, and we'll talk about this a little bit more. And, and uh, speaking of those things, I should note here that one of our little news notes is that Archbishop Joseph Nauman of Kansas City, Kansas, last week called for respect for the continual rights of those who object 
two COVID-19 vaccines, saying that people could reasonably choose to reject the abortion tainted jabs to give a prophetic witness against abortion. Okay, and a lot of this is going around right now, these vaccine mandates right. that are telling people that if you don't take the jab, you don't have a job. I, I've heard that also, and I keep my eye on the uh, Novavax uh, mm-hmm. vaccine, which is one of the ones that's supposed to be introduced in the United States here in the, th- the fourth quarter, mm-hmm. um, approved for emergency use. And it has uh, had no abortion tissue used in its production or its um, testing. Mm-hmm. And I, th- I think um, a lot of um, conscious obje- objectors will take that vaccine when it becomes available. I and think they will, too. The reports show that it's even more effective than any of these uh, others that were introduced early, which I'm really glad. We had some vaccines that were introduced early, but we shouldn't yeah, have, I have to no force obje- everyone. I, I have an objection to taking the vaccine, the aborted tainted vaccine myself. But if people want to do that, if they square that, you know, and, and there are a lot of theologians in the church that say it's illicit to take. So let them take it. Let people who want to rest on their conscience do that. Do we have a prayer to open? We do. Things? Prayer for peace this morning. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of peace, bring your peace to our violent world, peace in the hearts of all men and women, and peace among the nations of this earth. Turn to your way of love those whose hearts and minds are consumed with hatred. Strengthen us in hope and give us the wisdom and courage to work tirelessly for a world where true peace and love reign among nations and in the hearts of all. Amen. Thank you very much, Gina. This is Faith on Trial on Iowa Catholic Radio, and we will be right back after these messages. Thank you, Big Red Q Quick Print, for underwriting the sports report. Family owned and operated since 1980, Big Red Q Quick Print is a full service print shop ready to help you with all your printing needs with speed and accuracy. Forms, manuals, brochures, letterhead, envelopes, business cards, custom invitations, design, and bindery. Big Red Q Quick Print, located across from Merle Hay Mall. Online at bigredq Des Moines.com. Big Red Q Quick Print. We make printing easy. Thank you, Caldwell Parish, for underwriting Iowa Catholic Radio. Conform to the wishes of the deceased and to Catholic liturgical burial traditions. Caldwell Parish Funeral Home, Des Moines' only Catholic-owned and operated funeral home. CaldwellParish.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Dowling Catholic Sports is provided in part by Ashworth Vision Clinic. With two licensed optometrists, Barbara Sheets, a Dowling graduate, and Dr. Craig Harper, the Ashworth Vision Clinic team provides complete eye exams, contact lenses, glasses, glaucoma testing, and pre- and post-operative care. Ashworth Vision Clinic is located at 60th and Ashworth in West Des Moines. 515-440-4610 or online, ashworthvision.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Faith on Trial provided by Paul Martin and Paul Mitchell, owners of Imogene Ingredients. Imogene Ingredients supply specialized feed ingredients for livestock and pet diets to improve maternal and young animal health in both conventional and organic production. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by CTO. Your support has helped thousands of students attend our Catholic schools. CTOiowa.org. At CTO, the bottom line, it's for the kids and their future. And we're back. And with us right now is Julie Blake, who's the senior counsel for the Alliance Defending Freedom. And she has uh, just filed a lawsuit against the government over uh, their new um, uh, mandate that uh, requires doctors to perform gender transition procedures, even if it violates their conscience or their medical um, uh, Philosophy. philosophy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if, it, if it's good for the patient or not, oh, I guess right. is what they're thinking. Hi, right, Julie. Julie, how are you? Great. Thanks for having me on. Oh, certainly. Thank you for joining us. All right. Tell us a little bit about this, uh, this lawsuit and where this is coming from. We did a little bit of an introduction before we brought you on about the redefinition of sex through uh, uh, the Obamacare uh, Act. Um, so why don't we start with that? so we can lay a predicate to how uh, HHS is determining that we now have this mandate? Well, the government under President Biden is reinterpreting Obamacare to require doctors perform controversial, life-altering procedures on their patients, even if it's against the doctor's medical judgment or religious beliefs, and even if it's on children. 
Uh, this is a radical form of government overreach uh, created by President Biden and his Department of Health and Human Services, and it needs to be stopped. Uh, these procedures are controversial, dangerous, and they require um, doctors to ignore the reality of sex, treat patients as if they were the other sex, um, which creates inaccurate and dangerous health care, and especially when it comes to procedures on surgeries and prescriptions of hormones or puberty blockers on adolescents, creates dangerous, irreversible, and experimental effects on children. That's what I was going to say. It destroys their lives in many cases. The, the regrets later in life are irreversible. And even worse, the government is coercing doctors to speak and endorse these procedures, which prevents doctors from giving patients informed consent so that families can understand even exactly what they're going into and consider alternatives. Now, it also, uh, from reading your um, petition that you filed, it bans single-sex rooms in, in medical establishments and showers and things like that? What the government's doing is tr making doctors and health care providers treat people by their gender identity as opposed to the reality of their biological sex. So if a man demands access to a breastfeeding support group because he claims to be a woman, they have to agree, or to a mental health therapy group for postpartum mothers. The same thing. This is an invasion of the privacy rights of other patients and functionally means the end of a lot of single-sex programs for women. And my understanding is that it also mandates insurance coverage for these uh, practices. That's right. If a doctor owns his own practice and provides employees with health insurance, the government also seeks to make that doctor pay for these gender procedures and surgeries and drugs for all of his employees in that health plan. And that, that type of government coercion simply has to be stopped. So th would this apply to all doctors, or is there a certain specialty that that, that would... Uh, because I read it and I thought, well, gosh, m my general practitioner doesn't perform gender transition procedures that I'm aware of. Uh, would she be required to follow these rules, and how? So there's probably uh, two factors that trigger this. One is, does the doctor have a practice, work in a medical system, a hospital, a doctor's office that accepts any form of federal money? That's Medicare, Medicaid, CHIP programs uh, like that. If so, um, they fall within the government's mandate. And realistically, that's nearly every doctor in right. America, because most doctors want to help and serve people who are in financial need, especially religiously motivated doctors or doctors in rural areas. Um, and then the second question is just how aggressive the government is going to be in enforcing this mandate. Right front and center in the target of this mandate are pediatricians, family practice doctors, OBGYNs, anyone who interacts with um, pediatrics, adolescents, uh, and any form of reproductive health services. Mm -hmm. All of these doctors will be required to provide these procedures. If a doctor is willing to do a hysterectomy because they're a cancer doctor and a woman has cancer and you need a hysterectomy to remove the cancer, then they'll be required to use that same skill set uh, to do a hysterectomy for a woman who claims that she is a man. Okay. And that's the example the government is giving us about what they require. Okay, now what brought about the suit? Who, who is, is, uh, are the, the plaintiffs behind this? And why are you filing it? Because this seemed a little odd to me, unless your plaintiffs live there, the Eastern District of Tennessee. Right. My question, too. Thank you. So uh, our, we represent uh, two medical associations and an individual doctor. The medical associations together uh, ha represent about 3,000 uh, health providers, doctors in America, spread across the country nationwide. Uh, American College of Pediatricians is a group of both religious and non-religious doctors who are opposed to these dangerous and controversial procedures, especially on minors. Uh, their uh, organization was founded and incorporated in Tennessee. Ah, okay. We're also partnering with an individual doctor who practices in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Okay. That, 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 and that, then our other organization also has members in Tennessee, too. Yeah, that's Catholic Medical Association. Yes. Yeah, well, that explains the venue then. They're, 
They're from Tennessee. That's so, why they're suing in Tennessee. And the point of the suit, they don't have a, 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 a plaintiff yet. So the point of the suit is to get ahead of this so that uh, there's no actions by the uh, government um, going forward. Is that correct? Well, our understanding is that the government is doing exactly what it said that it is actively seeking to enforce and process complaints against health care providers all across the country. And from what the government has said publicly, they have a team of people in their, in their bureaucracy working on doing just that. We just don't know who's going to be uh, next that they're, they're going after. But in the meantime, they're trying to make us change our policies, change our procedures, and affirmatively offer all of it, uh, affirmatively use the pronouns of people, and if we don't, then our clients risk serious crippling penalties and being driven out of health care entirely. Courts have traditionally said that they are welcome uh, to review the legality of the government's actions when they're trying to change people's behavior in this way okay. and, under uh, threat of all these sanctions. Uh, and one of the uh, couple of the arguments is that this violates now the um, uh, ADA, um, the administrative, or it should be APA, the Administrative Procedures Act, in that it was apparently adopted um, irregularly, and also RIFRA, Religious Freedom Restoration Act. Yes. You know, some of these laws can have some very boring titles given to them by Congress, but they actually do really important things. Um, by creating procedures that say that when you make major changes in law, you need to have it go through Congress, and you need to have opportunities for public participation so that people can bring their concerns to the government and have the government hear and address their concerns, it helps deter the government from doing exactly these kinds of mandates. And so when the government acts on its own and ignores Congress and ignores the public, um, that type of overreach leads to bad outcomes. And it's another reason why the court should stop what the government's doing. Okay. Uh, and then uh, do you, are you aware of any similar lawsuits that have been filed around the country? Yes, there have been a few other lawsuits as well. Uh, two different courts have ruled um, that part of this law, uh, part of what the government is doing is unlawful, um, and they've given relief to a few of other groups of medical providers. But because the vast majority of doctors in America still haven't had the protection of a court order, that's why our clients are banding together with a large group of providers and asking the government to be stopped by the court for everyone in the country. Okay. I, I, and I suspect that the uh, HHS will fight this t- to the bitter end. They will continue to move this along in the courts to win this case. Well, we saw what they did last week. Uh, we had on, uh, Julie, we had on um, uh, Roger, what was his last name? Mm-hmm. Uh, used to be the uh, director of the Office of Civil Rights for Severino, Roger Severino, uh, for HHS under the uh, Trump administration. And he filed a lawsuit, or they filed a lawsuit against a medical facility that was forcing nurses to perform abortions that didn't want to. And uh, he said it was an open and shut case. Yet, as soon as the the, uh, Biden administration came in, uh, they uh, dismissed the lawsuit. The Department of Justice right. quit pursuing it, yes. yeah. So I'm assuming that they'll continue to fight as, as hard as they can to have their policies I'm I'm assuming they will. Enacted. I'm assuming they will. Have you heard any response back from um, HHS? Have they filed a, a response to your complaint? Um, not yet, um, but here's what we do know. Um, on day one, President Biden signed an executive order making this his top priority and requiring this type of gender identity uh, mandate across federal agencies. And he has since followed that up with a lot of other notices, court documents, court filings ever since then. Um, And so we know that this issue is front and center and that this government overreach is illegal and has, has to be stopped. And that's why we've got so many pediatricians and doctors standing together for freedom right now. And I I take it you're prepared to take it all the way to the Supreme Court if necessary. (laughs) You you always hope that uh, you can reach a quick and speedy resolution to the case. But in a case of this significance, we are here with our clients uh, to win and whatever is needed to protect them. 
Yeah, I think HHS and, and the Biden administration are going to dig in their heels on this. Yes. And yes, we'll follow it for yeah, sure. I think it will. Uh, are you projecting any time frame for a trial? Obviously, they haven't answered uh, your petition yet, so. Yes, you know, it's a little early to know that for sure, but we will be pushing the court uh, to give us relief as quickly as possible. Okay, very good. Thank you for your help with the doctors. Well, thank you. Um, We certainly uh, wish you well in this endeavor. It's uh, certainly an important matter, and it's uh, just, again, uh, uh, any number of our rights are being trampled on right now, and a lot of them in in this medical area. And uh, we wish you well because... uh, uh, you're in a way you're you're really working for us all trying to get this done. Let me uh, ask you one quick thing before you go. If somebody wants to follow up on this or even make a small donation to ADF, where do they go? Uh, our website is adflegal.org. Very good. Certainly appreciate that. Well, our prayers are with you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you for you, joining Julie. us. We certainly appreciate it. God bless. Goodbye. You're listening to Faith on Trial on Iowa Catholic Radio. We will be right back after these messages. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and the Uncommon Good provided by Mercy College of Health Sciences, where you can chart your course for more. This is Bo Bonner. And I'm Dr. Bud Marr from the Uncommon Good. Mercy College provides unparalleled clinical rotations, hands-on learning, accelerated education, and flexible schedules. Since 1899, Mercy College has been transforming students into healthcare professionals. Guided by Catholic values, our faculty put classroom theory into practice. Students are prepared for roles in service and leadership throughout their own careers. Learn more at mchs.edu. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by Construction Professionals. Construction Professionals does remodeling and new construction. Construction Professionals is a Catholic family business built on a strong foundation. cpcustomhomes.com. Thank you, Construction Professionals, for supporting Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Catholic Women Now provided in part by Permar Security, providing security solutions for homes and businesses since 1953. Permar Security is a Catholic-owned family business supplying security systems, access control systems, video surveillance, fire alarm systems, and video doorbells. All alarm systems are monitored out of their monitoring center located in the state of Iowa. Permar Security, 515-244-5660, permarsecurity.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Dowling Catholic Sports is provided in part by Ashworth Vision Clinic. With two licensed optometrists, Barbara Sheets, a Dowling graduate, and Dr. Craig Harper, the Ashworth Vision Clinic team provides complete eye exams, contact lenses, glasses, glaucoma testing, and pre- and post-operative care. Ashworth Vision Clinic is located at 60th and Ashworth in West Des Moines. 515-440-4610 or online ashworthvision.com. And you're listening to Faith on Trial, Iowa Catholic Radio, and we are back. Uh, Gina, interesting case here on this. And one of the things that kept going through my mind while we were talking with Julie is that all of these, um, I don't want to call them screwy, but all of these goofy things right now that are coming out of the administration, I'm so surprised having known uh, Joe Biden's history that uh, this is what He's pushing. Yeah, I don't understand it either, um, because I thought his worldview was different than his actual values being portrayed in his policies. Um, I thought he understood uh, the individuality and humanity of each of us. And uh, instead, it seems like he's very dead set on um, controlling the entire population in one sense or another. And and his uh, appointments seem to be dead set also in pushing their policies and values on all of us. It's almost like he is pandering <laughs> well, to I don't, a small yeah, group. There's, yeah, I hear some rumblings about how he's being manipulated and what his mental acuity is. And I, 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 I doubted it for a long time, but I, I might be getting on board here soon. Yeah, I, I am so surprised <laughs> knowing his history and watching him. You know, I've, I've watched politics and government and that since I was in high school and watching his career, and he always seemed somewhat of a moderate to me. Mm-hmm. And then he just, and, and that's how he ran. You know, he's going to be the adult in the room. And then he, it's just like you flip a switch, and now all of a sudden he's not only 
tolerating abortion, you know, I'm personally opposed, but I'm not going to. He's not doing that. He's actively promoting it. Right. And he's actively promoting some of these other issues that uh, that fly in the face of what our church teaches us and the way we've always believed in the past. Exactly. Well, and he seems very poorly catechized to me based on no, his He carries actions. his rosary beads. Isn't that what they tell <laughs> us? Yeah. He, he plays the part well, I he guess. He plays the part well, And, yeah. um, you know, I'm waiting for that St. Paul moment for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Knock them down, blind them. And despite that, <laughs> Jesus. The, in the bigger picture, why is the government so involved in my daily health and, and well-being? Um, do they not think that I can uh, manage things myself and, under, and work with my doctor who's been trained? And I worry about our medical professionals, you know, from since Obamacare, so many of them have been discouraged by... Uh, what they're being told they they have to do by our government and instead one of, of practicing medicine. One of the things medicine. that bothers me, and they mentioned it on TV this morning when I was watching, um, the CDC still does not recognize natural immunity for COVID. Well, they yeah. only recognize the vaccine. <laughs> I know, and they're avoiding some therapeutics, and we talked they about that in the beginning. Are. So yeah. it's um, it's it's. It's disheartening, and I imagine we'll have more of these kinds of programs at Faith on Trial. <laughs> Let's uh, turn our attention to something that came out of uh, Wisconsin. Um, a report shows that 621 botched abortions left baby parts inside the mother. A devastating report into abortion in Wisconsin has revealed that 11% of abortions that took place there in 2019 resulted in complications, including more than 600 incomplete abortions. Instances of incomplete abortion where parts of the aborted baby remain behind after the procedure numbered 621 in 2019 in Wisconsin, up by 750% compared to 2018, according to the Society for the Protection of the Unborn Children. That's 621 scary. women. This, I, that's uh, an unbelievable amount of injury, I think, and malpractice in mm-hmm. most Maybe medicine. the Biden administration ought to try and clean up all these things. All right, we're about out of time. Let's end with our prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him. We humbly pray and do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen. That's it for today. Join us next week for another edition of Faith on Trial. And until then, have a blessed and peaceful week. Our freedom of conscience and religion is being challenged by laws and regulations imposed by secular society. Faith on Trial with Defender of the Faith, Deacon Mike Mano. Faith on Trial, Thursdays at 10 a.m. on Iowa Catholic Radio, iowacatholicradio.com, and the Iowa Catholic Radio app. Support for Faith on Trial and Iowa Catholic Radio provided in part by Imogene Ingredients.